Hi, good afternoon um, and good morning and good evening if you're joining us from overseas. Uh, my name is Ahmed Gamal and I'm very pleased to welcome you all to another financial wellness uh, webinar here at MetLife. Um, this webinar has been one that we've been preparing for for quite some time now. It's been a long time coming and we're very excited to be here today to discuss some of the latest uh, customer uh, market insights and uh, have a very exciting um, panel of expert, subject matter experts with me today, which I'd love to introduce to you. Uh, first off, we have um, Apostolos Ailamakis, who is head of bank insurance and DTC here at MetLife Golf. Hello, Apostolos. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, we also have Iftikhar Sheikh, who is de de deputy head of face to face here at MetLife Golf. Hello, everyone. And we also have Shahzad Doctor, who is our Senior Consultant for Market Research at Global Market Strategy and Science. Hi, Shahzad. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Awesome. Uh, so these are some of my exciting colleagues that I really enjoy working with. Uh, we all participate in you know, many, many sort of design thinking sessions and collaboration sessions to get to where we are today. And we're very excited to take you through some of our latest market trends and our customer insights. Before we begin, um, at the end of the session, we're going to be um, spending some time to go through a Q&A. Uh, so we'll dedicate the last 10 or 15 minutes for a Q&A session. So if you're interested in participating or uh, submitting any questions to any of our, any of our uh, panelists, in the webinar, the section is a drop down that says uh, questions. So feel free to type your questions there, and we'll be sure to look at the questions Uh, let's begin. I think I think to start off, this, this question is for Shazad, right? So looking at our market research, we saw that 52% of people in the UAE are financially optimistic. But at the same time, we saw that 39% of people in the UAE are financially stable, right? And there's obviously a bit of a discrepancy in that. There's not really a discrepancy, there's a, there's a difference or a variance in that data. So what, what does that mean and why do you believe there is a gap between stability and optimism for people in the UAE? Right. Thanks, Ahmed. Um, first, I think it's important to understand the two terms, which is uh, financial stability and financial optimism. I think uh, they are unique in their own definition. So stability is what we define as the current state of mind. How respondents, when they were responding, are now residents of the UAE, currently rate their financial health uh, at that moment of time. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an in-moment kind of measure. Um, and financial optimism is more a forward-looking or more a future-looking uh, measure where customers or respondents in the UAE feel their financial health will be in 12 to 24 months' time. Now, because of this difference, it's also important to understand why the numbers are low, right? Uh, and that's because of what drives these two different uh, variables. Financial stability or the current state of financial health is defined or is driven by customers who feel that you know they don't have the right amount of money at the moment to fulfill their financial needs or obligations that they might have to their family customers who feel they don't have the right skills or the right education level to manage their funds correctly whereas uh, of financial optimism is largely driven by external factors as well uh, and also by people who are slightly more I would say experienced or educated in, in, in managing their finances in, in saving up for a better future now we all have gone through a very very interesting 2020 if I can say uh, that and 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 that has caused that current state of mind to be at 39 percent and to be honest when we look at it in a global scheme of things, it is quite low because COVID really hit us hard. Uh, majority of the people who are currently unemployed in the UAE claim that they are unemployed because they lost their jobs during COVID, which means that the number one reason keeping them up at mind is, is whether they'll be able to financially support their families. And, and that's why we see that number at 39%. However, when we ask them where they think their financial health or think their financial situation will be 12 to 24 months down the line, that's when they are a lot more positive and a lot more uh, 
in, in, in a good frame of mind saying that yes in 12 months i will be in a better state this situation will improve and i will have the right tools to kind of continue or rebuild my life and that's why we see that number slightly higher uh than than the 39 percent so that's that's the answer to your question Great, thank you so much. Yeah, well, it's good to meet. It's good to see, and it's good to know that people here in the UAE are optimistic, you know, and resilient no matter what. They still have that sort of positivity, and they are, you know, they're looking forward to a better tomorrow. And that's that's great that the data tells us that. Um, moving on to the next uh, data point, the next insight. This was going to be for Osolos. So we we've seen that based on our data, 84 of people in the event of an income loss cannot maintain their standard of living for more than two months, right? That's, um, you know, that's kind of a, a, big, a big number, to be honest, looking at all the people that responded in our survey. So they cannot, they don't have the savings beyond two months and they're kind of living, you know, spending what they have. So how does a finding like this help your distribution and what does it mean for the bank assurance category? And, and I mean, what do we, where do we go from here uh, to sort of improve on this and, and just let, us, let us know your thoughts? Um, thanks, Nahavan. Prior, prior, I respond. Please try to mute because there's some echo sometimes. So I'm not sure if the audience can hear us properly. Um, so I would say um, what comes as a surprise is how many people don't consider protecting their most important assets themselves or their families. So it makes us all to wonder, is it actually a lack of awareness? The survey that we conducted uh, and the results showed, I would say, low financial readiness towards what we call unforeseen events. Is it an alarming statistic? Probably yes. And actually proves that majority of us are not uh, financially prepared for unexpected emergencies. Each and every one of us depending of course on our uh, you know life cycle have uh, specific financial goals that we want to fulfill but in most cases we don't have the financial backing in case of an unexpected event uh, loss of life uh, an accident uh, disability so emergency money has been particularly necessary especially in the area of covid i would say and the general thumb of rule is to have a cash stash equal approximately to six months of expenses. So I would say that that element highlights the importance of proper financial planning and definitely insurance can play a vital role as a strong uh, financially safety net. Uh, a finding like this, the, as per your question, is very helpful for us as it only puts into perspective what we always knew, right? I mean, and, and we now have a stronger conviction to work hand in hand with our partners and approach our customers on the need to increase awareness on financial planning and protection. Uh, I would say for us, uh, as MetLife means more focus on our protection solutions, and this is why, you know, the campaign that we're launching, uh, as we call it, Life Comes First, is an important platform. Uh, it allows us to put into perspective and highlight uh, what the customer priorities are and how we, as financial service professionals, have an obligation to help each and every customer achieve these objectives. So a concluding remark uh, from my side, family, financial, preparedness is a must win and this is where our partnership with our partners banks uh, and distribution but especially in the bank assurance category comes in as we say in MetLife uh, it's all about navigating life together thank you thank you Apostolos yes I, I I do agree it is it is about navigating like navigating life together and it's I think it'll take some time I mean today so customers only have two months of uh, kind of savings to get them to six months and to get them to consider insurance solutions. That's where you know we as MetLife, working with our bank insurance partners, could could help uh, serve that help fill that fill that gap. Um, moving on to our next point. Um, so this one is going to be for Iftikhar. So 40% of people in the UAE acknowledge that they need to do more to fulfill their future requirements in life. 
And that number is skewed really towards the younger people. So the people that are 38 or younger are kind of dominating that, um, you know, that, that group that they feel that they need to do more. I guess they've seen, you know, they probably lived through one recession and a pandemic and they're seeing a lot around them has, has been changing and they see the needs. So based on this and based on what we just we saw in our, in our, in our market research, um, what are the trends that we see in the face-to-face -face category with the demand for protection solutions for these people? Is the market data aligned with the reality for each of agency as well as IFA? Uh, well, thanks, Evan. Uh, I think um, I would start by saying that I'm not really surprised to find this data point that a lot of younger generation people are actually wanting to do more than what they're actually doing. So I think that's a good news for all of us coming in and representing uh, the financial planning industry all together. Uh, zeroing down to uh, what we are witnessing in our distribution specifically, uh, I think I absolutely echo to this group of people where a uh, majority of the customers whom we have, or we have recently uh, kind of onboarding them, uh, are very, very aware, are very, very clear in terms of what are their priorities and what exactly are they wanting. Uh, I would say because of COVID, I think majority of them uh, had this early enlightenment that what protection products can help them when it comes to family planning and protection for future goals. Uh, let me elaborate my response by giving one more example uh, for the benefit of everybody. Uh, UAE currently is a very, very unique market compared to other markets globally. Uh, and I'm specifically talking from an insurance point of view. Majority of the population, what we have over here are expatriates. So people like you and me come into this country in a period where we want to maximize and optimize the opportunities in this country. And at the same time, prepare for a better future and give a better standard of living to our families back home. These customers have various priorities whether it comes from planning for the family's financial security, whether it comes from child education, or maybe even as far beyond as having a good retirement. So when these customers are faced with crisis and scenarios, as we just discussed, the awareness and the trends are really encouraging. Majority of these customers are aware of protection, and that's exactly what's got reflected in our uh, research, what we did. Uh, I would just end my answer by giving one quote, uh, which uh, we generally discuss. That anybody who has an income where the family is dependent upon, he needs insurance. And this exactly now is getting acknowledged by the larger audience in the country. Thank you so much for your insightful response, FC. I mean, yes, I, I do agree. Anyone with dependents, uh, it becomes a responsibility for them to make sure that they have the right protection for their for their family and their loved ones. And um, needless to say, seeing that demand grow in that in that category, especially for younger people, is, is great for us to, to see and learn. Um, moving on to our next data point and insight. Um, so this was going to be for Shazad, back to you. So 60% of respondents believe they are either not adequately, adequately insured or are unsure of whether their insurance would cover an eventuality, right? So they might have an insurance, but they're not really sure if it covers. And, you know, there's kind of like a lack of understanding. And maybe should I say a, lot, a, big, a big segment of underinsurance. So the, the point about underinsurance appears a few times in our market research, in our white paper. Uh, can you explain what it means to be underinsured although owning a policy and how does someone mitigate the situation sure i think uh, i think under insurance is 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 a very important uh, term in our in our business and in our industry and it's it's something that we need to keep an eye out on and and i do believe under insurance in in our context is defined as in two parts uh, let me explain. The first part is, is in simple terms, is that if you have to go to a hospital, a clinic, to, or to a doctor, and you have to pay out of your own pocket, whether it's a simple copay or for a majority of the treatment, uh, which is not claimed back from your insurance or is not covered by the insurance that you have, basically that's under insurance. 
that's uh, the first part where it affects the insured. The second part, which I personally believe is is the bigger uh, issue that we need to solve for, is 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 exactly what uh, Iftikhar just mentioned: is that if our dependents or people that rely on the insured's income that comes through, what about them? Um, now we are very fortunate in the UAE as expats to have a medical insurance from our employer as as a stated rule. However, this insurance is while great has an annual limit as we all know has different benefits and covers depending on the employer, depending on the insurance provider, and so on. So majority of the time when when respondents actually undergo an eventuality that is more serious than a common cold um, like a critical illness or a life-threatening uh, uh, incident or a disability uh, that could have an impact a significant impact on the income coming into the company uh, into the household that's where the big gap in the uae is um, and that's what respondents in in our survey said uh, when they actually went through an event eventuality they realized that they had to shell out a lot more money from their savings from their own bank to cover the expenses which meant that they did not have uh, enough protection for their family to not to not only financially protect them but to lead a normal life uh, to pay their house bills to pay their rent to pay their school fees to live up to the standard of living that they have here and i think as an insurance company that's what we need to solve for we need to solve for that gap between medical uh, medical costs that are rising significantly in our, in in the uae and um, ensuring that our insured members have the satisfaction or the peace of mind if something happens they have enough to protect their family or their or at least their family is covered to continue living uh, a, a normal life um and 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 it's a big gap it's 60 percent of our respondents uh and and uh Unfortunately, there is a false self of belief that the, the card in my pocket provided by my employer will cover for everything. And what we saw through the data is those people that have only that insurance, that gap widens. So yes, uh, under insurance is, is, a big, is a big gap in our market. And, and I, I believe that needs to be addressed at the earliest. Thank you for your response to that. I mean, I definitely agree with you there. I think that the, the more people think of the insurance, the medical insurance card as their only go-to, then then you know they sh should we are falling in this underinsured category. And uh, the gap is you know the expenses that they pay every single day. You know the, the life expenses continue, the rent, the mortgage, the fees, the schooling, um, and not only that, but there's also hidden costs that they need to consider. So, I mean, under insurance is a is a challenge that we as uh, financial service experts are need to work collaboratively collaborative to solve. So moving on to the next data point, and this one is back to you, Apostolos. Um, only 4% of income is dedicated to insurance products. So this is kind of like leading from the previous question should that respond to who just responded. Even as roughly one quarter is attributed to other savings investments, including bank and savings accounts, investment savings and remittance abroad. So we're only seeing, we're seeing a very low, um, a sort of percentage of someone's income being dedicated to insurance products. What, from your point of view, what can the bank insurance category do to help improve that score? How can we sort of improve and, and scale it up? Um, I would say again, um, you know, the output of the survey is not a surprise to us. It's not a surprise to us. Uh, our research in, uh, in the UAE prove that uh, protection is a neglected asset. Uh, we can say it's an underserved asset, right? So firstly, as a common rule of thumb, so we're sitting at a 4% as you described in the question, a common rule of thumb says that approximately six to 8% of our gross income plus approximately 1% for each dependent needs to be invested on insurance. Banks, we are all customers of a bank, uh, have relationships with customers for many years. And actually, they have helped customers to reach their financial goals. How? With their core products and offerings. But a solid and secure uh, financial plan or securing a good, let's call it, financial wellness uh, will be incomplete without the protection element. And, and that is exactly where uh, bank assurance solutions step in 
to complement the bank customer experience. Uh, MetLife, you know, as, as experts in protection, we have now the customer perspectives. Uh, we have the data, insights to drive insurance growth because I, I would say we have identified the triggers. What are the priorities? For example, priorities for a customer, family protection, financial security. What are the barriers? Affordability, uh, eligibility, the value of the purchase. So by addressing those points, we can start gradually seeing this 4% shifting to six and maybe even seven or eight. So once again, a concluding remark, I would say improving financial wellness is a must win. Uh, you know, we at MetLife hand in hand with our partners, we make it, we made it our aim to educate customers and the broader population about insurance opportunities. Thank you.